O que é que estás aí a fazer? Estou a ver TV, porquê? Agora é hora de ver TV? Ah, oh, realmente? Agora é hora de fazer vídeo? Hello guys, and Shoot Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and today I finally bring you this video. I finally do! Which is the Ryzen 7 1700 vs Ryzen 5 2600. So, Ryzen 7 1700 at 3.9 GHz, Ryzen 5 2600 at 4.1 GHz, the Vega 56 is also overclocked to 1600 MHz on core, around 1600 MHz on core Vega. Um, varies a lot on the load so it's quite strange but whatever 1600 megahertz on core 920 megahertz on the hbm2 and the ddr4 is at 3000 cl15 but most of you will be like hey man why not 3200 megahertz cl16 because the prices are just okay no the prices are not okay because well if you are talking about let's say uh, America, USA, so and maybe some European countries, okay, but that is not all of the world. So in most in most countries, for example, uh, 3000 megahertz CL15 will be a lot less expensive than 3200 megahertz CL16. Um, and well, this video is worldwide, baby. And when I mean worldwide, I mean worldwide. Yeah. Now jokes apart, guys. We have several games tested. Seven games in this case. Um, and well, we have first the side-by-side -side comparisons, 20 seconds each, and in the end of every side-by-side -side comparison we have the charts with narration. The, um, the games were tested at 1080p, 1440p and 2160p, so 4K. Easy. And that's it for now, guys. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video, because that really helps a lot. Um, and well, let's now go to the part that you really want to see, the benchmarks. See you in the resume. Don't forget to watch it. The first game tested today is Far Cry 5. This game is known to like strong IPC CPUs, so it would be obvious that Ryzen 5 2600 would be faster due to higher frequency and lower inner latencies, right? Wrong! I was quite surprised here, because even at 1080p medium settings the performance was always within the margin of error. In this game, being it 1080p, 1440p or 2160p, we can call it a tie. Let's see the next one. This time we are seeing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, known for being highly GPU intensive, and that can be seen in this graph, obviously. The values are one more time within the margin of error, but that is quite normal since even at 1080p medium settings and using an overclocked Vega 56, the GPU was hitting 100% most of the time. But well, don't get me wrong, obviously, this is actually a good sign. Moving on. Now on Rainbow Six Siege, 
we can clearly see that the results are once again pretty close. At 1440p we started hitting a GPU bottleneck, and that was also the case at 2160p. Still, at 1080p the results are almost the same regarding average FPS. The only thing that changed, and is also quite important, was the value of the 1% lows. I think this was due to Ryzen 5 2600 having 200MHz more on frequency and having lower inner latencies. Still, pretty close results once more. Finally, PUBG. People love to see this game tested, and this time I made it happen. This was also using the replay feature, so keep in mind that the replay feature decreased the FPS value quite a lot, so in, or in a normal gameplay the numbers would be higher most of the times. We can see that the results are pretty close in terms of average FPS, but Ryzen 5 2600 will pull ahead in terms of 1% lows, even at 1440p. This is one more time due to higher frequency and lower inner latencies. Yes, we already know. Quite expected. Let's see the next game. Now testing the first of three light esports games. CSGO is actually the only title till now where clear differences can be seen, but that is quite normal since we are talking of average FPS numbers of more than 300. Still, analyzing properly, we can clearly see that Ryzen 7 2700 at 3.9GHz is enabled to achieve more than 355.5 FPS, while the Ryzen 5 2600 achieves 65 FPS more, a difference of around 15%. In real gameplay the difference would even be higher since we don't have the almighty super heavy smokes to bring a GPU bottleneck in. Still interesting results. The second light esports title is Dota 2. This time I only tested at 1080p and 1440p due to this game not liking virtual super resolution. Still, I found a fix for it, but that's for another video. Well, it is always hard to replicate the gameplay, but as we can see, once more, both CPUs are mostly equal, with Ryzen 5 2600 pushing a bit more FPS on the 1% lows at 1080p and Ryzen 7 1700 strangely pushing more FPS at 1440p, average FPS but I think that is clearly due to gameplay sided changes. The last game is finally here, and it is League of Legends. To be fair, I was already expecting this type of results due to my previous comparison of Ryzen 5 2400G versus the Ryzen 5 2600 where Ryzen 5 2400G was quite faster on League of Legends while having less cash, that was due to lower latencies, and the same applies here. The difference is not so big on average FPS numbers, but we should look more into the 1% lows, where Ryzen 5 2600 is quite ahead. Still nothing you could really notice unless you have a high frequency panel or monitor. And well, let's hear the conclusion now. So guys, resuming, Ryzen 7 1700 or Ryzen 5 2600, so they are roughly the same price of course, um, and what should you pick? Okay, you've seen the charts of course, but my opinion is that 
it depends obviously on what you want so if you want pure gaming nothing more nothing less and you have a let's say high to enthusiast level gpu so vega 56 or gtx 1070 ti and above then if you have that if you have a really strong gpu you may go to ryzen 5 2600 because in some games as in for example um csgo and in some others the fps is a bit higher and if you have a good cooling you can go and overclock it a bit more and if you have uh, better ram speeds you will have even more fps and etc but there's there's way more variables um if you are more into multi-threading work uh, or even if you like for example like me i also like to um, to render while gaming if you also do that of course so rendering a video or compressing or decompressing a thing um any kind of multi-threaded work if you like that then Ryzen 7 1700 is the way to go because the price is almost the same you have two more cores and four more threads so Ryzen 5 has six cores and 12 threads and the Ryzen 7 has eight cores and 16 threads and the difference is quite big when you are doing for example rendering and other multi-threading works and well I was really surprised because I have for example this comparison you can see of Ryzen 5 1600 versus the Ryzen 5 2600 and the difference was quite big so I was expecting quite big in some scenarios of course but I was expecting a little more from Ryzen 5 2600 and I was surprised and I'm still surprised that Ryzen 7 is able to keep to keep up in most scenarios apart from one or two let's say above 300 FPS uh, above from that uh, apart from that the Ryzen 7 is really the way to go to go that is really the way to go you have more cores more threads the price is the same and you have an excellent CPU for everything you throw at it um, apart from extreme gaming then go Intel of course but apart from that you have a, an excellent CPU for the price and I don't think there is a reason apart from gaming only to go Ryzen 5 2600 instead of Ryzen 7 1700. That's it. That's it for today guys. If you made it to this part of the video because not many people watch the intro and mostly not many people watch the resume or the conclusion. If you made it to this part, thanks a lot for watching my videos and for watching them um, at least most of the parts. Uh, thanks a lot. And well, I'll be soon doing a little contest to... Um, to give the the code of the division 2 because i won't be using it so i'll be giving you guys um the serial key of it also leave a comment on the comment section and tell me what you think about this video and share it because it really helps a lot now guys see you in the next one and thanks one more time